Hello everyone, here we are, Robin the Sudoku Guy with tutorial number 44. This is part 2 of uh, tutorial 43. I'm going to add a little bit more from last time. But before doing that, I want to tell you that we've got something new on my website. Have a look at this. If you wish to go to my website, go on to sudokuguy.com and you'll come up with a Google page looking like this. Now, if you take and click on the first one here, that one there, that'll take you to my website. And you'll notice it says on the very top, um, you've got uh, scroll down to, to find the contact, the index of videos, frequently asked questions and testimonials. If I click on this, come down here and I click on this button, It'll show, take you to all my videos. Uh, and here you'll see on this page, you've got a welcome introduction. You've got 12 uh, beginners lessons, um, 13 advanced lessons, and over 40, well, it's now going to be 43 uh, tutorials or more. And then you can go down and look at other things. These are all, on, this is what I call my channel page. Now I'm going to go back to my uh, uh, website and just show you something on that website. If I scroll down this, see how I'm scrolling down this, you, how you can contact me if you wish. We come to this one, and this is new. Index of Techniques, Procedures and Tricks. Now the big feature of this is that if you hit the download, it will bring you up with all the different techniques that I teach, both in the lessons and in the tutorials. And each one of these little numbers are the lesson number or the tutorial number where you may look at a particular technique. Let's just say this one here called matching pairs. Very powerful when you're doing Sudoku puzzles. Look at all the lessons that cover it. These are all the tutorials that cover it. And whenever you see the word all, that means that pretty well all um, your puzzles will come across these techniques. Let's go down further uh, and down here we have um, elimination of numbers in the advanced levels. Look at all that those lessons. And if I click on this one, let's say I click on one of these numbers, there's one there, I'll just guess it, and click on it, it'll take you straight to that video. Of course you always start with a, 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 a an ad which you can skip if you wish or can watch it, whatever you prefer. But here we are with that particular lesson that covers uh, hidden matching pairs and other techniques. So that's what I mean by that. Okay, so let's go back to the tutorial now. Well, here we are back again. And I want to just say a couple of words before I show on behind me. There's a couple of things I want to say. First of all, big thank you to all of you subscribers. I really appreciate your subscribing. You know, it's free. And when you click on the subscribe button, just to the right, there's a bell. And if you click on that bell, you will definitely get notifications of whenever I upload something. A couple of more things. Big uh, uh, mention to those of you who write underneath uh, the videos make comments um, and I really enjoy answering them. I do it every day. In terms of about my, my time available, I'm sorry to say that from now on I'm not able to do all your puzzles for you when you send them to me. I just don't have the number of hours in the day to do them. So please understand, but thank you for understanding that too. Now, Somebody asked about books, or which is the best way to find extra puzzles. Well, some books just emphasize certain techniques, and that's why it's important that if you get another book, you probably have to know some other techniques. Different books used in different places online use different algorithms. One final point, and that is this. Um, when you see a new, or any, video that I've done, take the time to look underneath and read the description because sometimes people send me questions and I know they haven't read what was underneath. So let's now get on to the second part of the uh, XY wing. Now, 
Here I've got two sets of numbers, two situations. This set of numbers are exactly the same as this set of numbers. What I'm going to do is two situations. First of all, I'm going to do this one, then I'm going to do this one. Now, in this case, you'll notice that I found an XY wing. Here is the pivot, the middle of the clock. Here are the hands of the clock. And it's got three numbers, a 1, 4, and a 5. Now, here we have the pivot, which means that this could be a 4 or a 5. But the interesting thing I want to show you, that whatever comes up, in your further as you do the puzzle, whatever comes up, whether it's a four or a five, that will always be a seven. That's neat. Let me show you. Let's take this situation. Let's say that this was a four. So it became a four down the puzzle. What that does is immediately this four cannot be there. So you're left with a one. I'll make this a nice big four now because that's what we assume has happened. Okay, now what are the ramifications of that very quickly? Well, first of all, because that's now a one, we'll make it a big one, this one can be eliminated, this one can be eliminated, and this one can be eliminated because they are all in that block. But also, because of that one, that one can be eliminated and that leaves you with a 7. Isn't that neat? Then, once you've got the 7, you look for other ramifications. Now let's look at this situation where instead of being a 4, like it was here, it's a 5. Okay, I'm going to put a, a 5 in there now, assuming that that came there as a result of doing the rest of the puzzle. So with here we, we put a 5 in. What are the ramifications of that? Well, first of all, this 5 can go. Secondly, this 5 can go, and you're left with another 1. Now, if that's a 1, therefore, this cell here can lose that 1, and this becomes a 7. So what we're trying to say here, the neat thing about the XY wing is that whichever one number, whether it was a 4 or a 5, in each case, that becomes a seven. Here we are, back again for the last little section of this tutorial. It'll only take about a minute, but again, it's all about sevens. Just pure luck that it works out to be that way. But let me show you. In this particular situation, we have not a complete puzzle, it's part of a puzzle, but I wanted to show you this bottom section in particular. If you take this six, it cannot go in here. It has to go down the bottom. If you take this three, uh, or this three, it cannot be up on top because that three is there. You have a six three here and a six three there, in other words. So therefore, this has to be a three six matching pair. Now, I had a guy who uh, was a student, and he made this mistake. Let me show you. He looked at the sevens up here, and he said, oh, if we have a center, we have a right. In this block, it has to be on the left, which is correct. And so what he did, he, he did this. He put a 7 here, a 7 can go there. Ah, uh ah, -uh, no, 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 no. Let me explain why you can't do that. If you've got a matching pair here, that means you cannot have that 7 there because a matching pair means that this cell is either a 3 or a 6, and that cell is th either a 3 or a 6. That's it. No other little numbers can go there, which means that you can get rid of that 7, and now this becomes the 7, a big 7. Isn't that neat to know? Straightforward, but it's handy to know. So that's it for this session. Hope you have fun this next, se this next month while you can solve your own puzzles. Bye for now. <laughs>